Jai Shri Ram. Welcome to Astrology with Abhilasha. Today we are talking about uh, the combinations uh, which are very necessary to have an affluent life, to have uh, all the riches of the world. And in this video, I'm going to talk about the riches in the world, right? It is not the mediocre richness it is like the top 10 rich rich in the world have these combinations that's what we are going to see today so let's get started so first and foremost i'm pretty sure that all the lovers of astrology who watch my channel already know the few tidbits of the combination which are said to be dhan karak in a horoscope and the most prominent one is the relation of the second and the 11th law that is the most classical combination to have all the riches in the life then we say exalted planets and also debilitated planets these are few dictums which are very widely known but we often also hear people saying that in spite of having these combination, they are struggling and not as rich as it is said in the classical books that these combination yield results. That is because we do not understand what the sages are telling us. We do not go in depth. We touch the topic very superficially. Having a debilitated and an exalted planet, also checking it in your D11 is a very good combination. But does it work always? No, it doesn't because we have to see certain other parameters also. Like if I remember correctly, I have also seen people saying that if the second lord, sorry, if the first lord, your ascended lord is in the second or the second lord is in the ascendant, that also makes a person very wealthy and rich. But that is not the case usually. In the classic, it is said that this native who have the first lord in the second and the second lord in the first is rich only in the way that he is very famous. He might be able to generate a lot of fame. But materialistic gain, the liquid cash, property, humongous fleet of all the luxuries in the world is something else. So let's get started. Uh, first dictum which I have found working is if the Lord of the second and a third occupy the Kendra house, one, four, seven, ten, then this makes a combination which can give you good amount of wealth. Now here in this video, I'll be telling you multiple dictums. And to reach the epitome of wealth and luxury, you must have at least 40% of these combinations. To be charted, to be the top 10 in the world, in the list of the rich. Okay, if you have certain one or two combinations, if they are applying partially, be assured that you will do pretty good in life. But can you be the next Elon Musk? That is not the case. So just like, let's see the example. Uh, if I talk about Dhirubhai Ambani versus Mukesh Ambani. Mukesh Ambani went up and made to the top 10 list of richest people in the world. But Dhirubhai, in spite of earning and creating the empire, could not do so just because of the horoscope. 
So you should understand that application of these techniques, these dictums have to be applicable to the line of 40 to 50% to attain things which we say as fill the rich. Okay. So the first one is if the Lord of the second and the third occupy Kendra house. So we see this dictum applicable. I will show you the chart in the coming section of this video, which is the later part of this video. But here, as I've written LV, so the owner of Louis Vuitton has this combination and he is currently in the top 10 of world richest. If four planets occupy their own house, instead of house, I should have written sign. So it's sign. Please correct it. If planet, four planets occupy their own house, that is also a combination to have wealth in your life. Second Lord in ninth, 10 or 11th is also a good combination. Now, generally, we see this a combination, but of late, I've heard people saying that, oh, no, it makes up to a 6-8 relation. Second lot in the ninth makes up to a 6-8 relation. How can it be good? It can be good in spite of this uh, drawback if it is in good D60. So your understanding, to decode the wealth in the horoscope, we should not only concentrate on the D1 chart. We have to go up to D7. Yes, D7 for wealth. I will tell you which point to check in the D7 chart to see if the person will be wealthy. We have to use D11. We have to use D60. I'm not using D11 in this video, but certainly I will make a video on that too. But I have used D60 extensively. Okay. So if the second lot is in 9th, 10th, or 11th, it is generally good for accumulating a lot of wealth, unless it is in bad Sashti Amsha. Now the second lot is making a connection in 9th, 10th, or 11th in Coco Chanel's chart, which I'll be taking up in the coming part. And it is also in good D60. So she the owner of the, uh, you know, the incorporator of this brand Chanel, the lady is very rich. Her brand is so popular, even posthumously after her death also, it is roaring to great heights. Why? Because her chart has some beautiful combination also in the D60. Now the dispositor of the 11th lot, if it is in beneficial D60. This combination we find in Dhirubhai Ambani's chart. His mass being the 11th lot is in Sheetal Sarshti Amsha, which is good. Okay. Now you understand that here we are not talking about the 11th the planet sitting in the 11th, we are talking about the dispositor of the 11th Lord. We are not talking about the 11th Lord here, but the dispositor of the 11th Lord. All right. So that is the catch. Generally, we often see the most com common combination people speak about second and 11th Lord but we have to check their dispositor to understand the true strength of the 11th house. For any house, no matter what, you have to check the strength of the dispositor of the Lord of that particular house, okay? This is to be done in any sphere of life, whether it's marriage, children, property, money, wealth, income, whatever, right? Now, dispositor of ascendant, in D9, isn't good D60. Again, it makes a very good combination to accumulate wealth, to generate business, and to be globally known. Now, one thing we must understand, 
I have to make a video on this as well, that how to approach a chart. So whenever we approach a chart for whatever matter, okay, we should first analyze the ascendant and the strength of the ascendant lord. Without this analysis, we should not move forward at all in the terms of reading a chart. Because if you do not have an able body and mind, no other combination should be studied. Because your ascendant is your driving vehicle. Okay, the ascendant lord is your driving spirit, the force. If that is afflicted, many good combinations will not yield that great results. But if the ascendant lord is robust, the ascendant is good. Even 10% of Raja Yoga, 10% of good combination will give you 50% of result because you have the capacity in yourself. That is not just one part of life which is strong. Your whole personality is strong to achieve, to gain that part in the materialistic world. So that's the case. Now, the other rule is benefit in 3, 6, 10, 11 houses. It is good for wealth. I know many people dread the sixth house, but for accumulation of wealth, for gaining day-to-day -day income, this is very good. A benefit placed in these houses. Dispositor of Ascendant Lord, a strong in Vaisheshi Kamsh, D10, uh, sorry, the Dasvarga and the Shodashwar. And if it is also expected by benefit, this is applicable again in Hirubhai Ambani's chart. Okay. Dispositor of 10th is in again Vaisheshi Kamsh, is also a good combination. Mukesh Ambani and Coco Chanel have this combination. So you find, see, I've just spoken, I think, three, three, six, nine combination. And almost five to six combination are present in their chart already. So you know the grit, the, you know, the heaviness of the chart in context of money matters. All right. This is a very sure short combination that person is wealthy if Mercury is in Cancer. I've seen this working blindly. I've seen people crossing the age of 40 and then suddenly they become the late bloomers and they achieve wealth like it's a matter of just time. So even people crossing the social normal age of earning money they achieve sudden gain of wealth. If Mercury is in Cancer, okay? Moving on. If Saturn occupy its own sign, house, I'm writing, but sign, or if Saturn is placed in the fifth or 11th house, that also make a combination of sure shot wealth, materialistic gain in your life, However, the person may be interested or not, but that will be the case. Jupiter's sun in 17 axis. Even the conjunction of Jupiter and sun, if Jupiter is not getting combusted by sun, that means the degrical distance is much more than the combustion point. And if Jupiter's sun have to happen to be in conjunction or they are situated in 17 axis, then this also makes a brilliant combination to earn good amount of wealth. But as I told you, this is just one combination and I have written almost 20 combinations here. So, you know, you have to have few numbers of these combination in your chart to reach that level of wealth. Okay. Where you've been known in the world due to the amount of money you have. Mad money. Okay. These are mad money combination. Now, check dispositor of 10th Lord in D7. If this planet is in good 
amsa like eravata amsa is good uh, simhasan amsa is very good parvata amsa is very good kerala is very good these are good amshas then this is also a good combination now you have to check the 10th lord of d1 take it go to the d7 chart see where this 10th lord of d1 is placed and who is becoming the dispositor of this 10th lord if that dispositor is either good in the amsa then it is a very good combination but i have also seen a variation of it working that if in d1 this a dispositor of 10th lord is like exalted or in a good dignity or making a conjunction with a good planet then also this this works just like in the case of dirubai ambani all right lord of second house in singhasan amsa or parvata amsa is very good uh, coco chanel again have this combination and i mean i've seen her chart i picked the blind charts some of them are my favorite people some of them are the top 10 current riches of, rich of the world and i have just picked these blind chart and applied these combination which i have seen working in my general consultation and i was blown away that all of them like all of them have most of these combination beautifully working without any deviation all right so that's what make them humongously rich okay uh now second and 11th conjunction is good and it become epitome of goodness now listen to it clearly this can be a bit confusing to the people who are still in the learning phase what i'm saying try to you know understand it go slow conjunction of the second and the 11th lord is good that is okay when it become the best when this combination become the best many people will have this combination the conjunction of the second and the 11th lord but what is that combination which if added to this can give you riches like these people if the dispositor if the navamsa dispositor of the ascendant lord make a connection with this combination then there is absolute mad money in your chart now dispositor of ascendant lord in d9 aspect this combination the second or 11th combination or i have also find this thing working that if this planet whichever is the dispositor of ascendant lord in d9 aspect the ascendant or the ascendant lord in d1 then this also give you riches like we see it in the louis vuitton on a chart and mukesh ambani's chart when i take up the example you will understand what i'm saying jupiter mercury venus in angular houses also give all kind of prosperity i have also seen this working even if two of them are in the angular houses like if jupiter venus is there mercury venus is there then also it is bound to give you good amount of money now there is also combinations there are plenty of combination that will you get money accumulated or the empire created by your parent by your father will you get some favors from your brother will you get money from your paternal side maternal side from wife or husband there are multiple combination of this kind but i have picked up that if you get a empire already created by your father or riches of your father will you be able to grow it that also can be seen from the chart that if you have inherited certain amount of money from your parents or your forefathers do you have that ability in your chart that you can grow it you can outgrow them 
or you can at least sustain that amount of money or you will spoil it at all. That also can be seen from the chart. So a person will get father's wealth if the Lord of the second house is respected by Saturn, Mercury, Jupiter, or Sun. This happens in Mukesh Ambani's chart. This is also applicable if these planets aspect the second house. Forget about the second lord. This can also work there. If any of this planet sit in the second house, then he will surely grow the wealth as well. He will first inherit, then he will grow it as well. Okay. So this is the chart of Louis Vuitton's owner, Bernard or not okay now sun is the ascendant lord its dispositor is mars in d9 and mars sitting in the seventh house aspecting the ascendant this is one of the dictum which i told you in the slides this is applicable then the other thing is uh, third lord in kendra Venus, that was the other dictum. All right. Now, if we see this is applicable in the chart, and wherever I've seen the other options, dispositor of ascendant lord, which I told you is aspecting the ascendant. Venus in angular houses is also there. So these are the things applicable in this chart. Now we see the chart of Mukesh Ambani. Here again, Venus, the ascendant lord, checking it in D9, it is positive become Mercury and Mercury here again is aspecting the ascendant. So that combination is also applicable here. Now, Saturn is sitting in the second house and Mars is aspecting it as well, being the second lord. So this is the combination which I told you here, inheriting the wealth of father. And because this planet Saturn is sitting also there in Scorpio, we see that he will be able to grow the wealth as well. This is a very classy combination, okay? Now we see Jupiter is in Kerala, Shodashwarga. Kerala is very good. Okay. Now, it is in good Vishashi Kamsha. That is also seen. What else were we seeing in his chart? Dispositor of 10th is in Vishashi Kamsha. Now, coming back to his chart. Moon. Okay. Now, Jupiter is the dispositor of the 10th Lord. And as I say, Jupiter is in Keral Shodashwarga, which ensures good amount of money. And I have not taken Rahu and Ketu much in these uh, dictum. But Rahul, uh, Rahu is also in Kerala, Shodashwarga, which again ensures great money and name and fame. Okay. Now, this is Coco Chanel's chart. Second Lord in Good D60. Her second Lord is Jupiter. It is in Chandra Rekha. Very, this is a very good D60. Okay, second Lord Jupiter in Devaloka and Purna Chandra as well in Vaisheshi Kamsha. See, in out of 10 Vargas, she is having Jupiter good in seven of them, Devaloka. And in Shodash Varga, nine of them, Purna Chandra. This is like a chart which will grow posthumously. She achieved everything during her life. She lived a long, good life and 
spite of certain controversies, she is still growing great, even after her death. Her brand is booming up. Dispositor of 10th Lord's son in good Amsa. That is also there present in this chart. Dispositor of 10th Lord becomes sun itself. It is in Parvata Amsa. Singhasan and Parvat, as I told you in the slide, is it very good. And it is even good in the Shodashwarga. So she has a brilliant chart for the matter of money. Lord of Third in Kendra. This is a classic combination which we have seen in many charts of people with huge money. Third Lord is Saturn sitting in the Kendra, aspecting the ascendant also, which again adds up. Second Lord in ninth and also in good day 60. Just having second Lord in ninth or nine Lord in second doesn't add up to anything. If it is not in the good Shashti Amsh, that has that is the key which I'm telling you. This is too much to tell in a YouTube video, but now, Kristen Dior chart, second Lord in Kendra, which I told you is a good combination. Second Lord exalted in D9. That is also very good. Benefic in 3610. Third house, Mercury. Sixth house, Jupiter in his own sign. Tenth moon. See, classically, to the point these rules just apply like butter. Dispositor of 10th Lord in Singhasan Amsa and Kerala is also present. So moon is itself the dispositor. It is in Singhasan Amsa and Kerala Amsa. The 10th Lord is sitting in his own sign. All right. Mercury again. In Cancer, D9. You can check it in D1 or D9. All right. And if you bring back this Mercury of D9 to the D1 chart, it will again go to the 10th house. Second 11 connection with dispositor of it ascendant in D9. Okay. Second and 11th is connected with the dispositor of ascendant also making a connection here. By expecting, mass is expecting sun and set in setting with it, okay? Now, again, the dispositor of Ascendant Lord in D9 is Mars. It is again making the connection with that Ascendant itself and also the, this combination. Okay. Now, Amsa Lord of Ascendant expecting the Ascendant. That is the classical combination which I told. Now, Laurel Harris. Friend, I'm sorry, I can only pronounce Betancourt Mayors. The richest woman currently in the world. She is the richest woman currently in the world. Now, let me tell you. I told you that if the second house or the second lord is expected by planet like Saturn, Mars, Sun, then this person have high chances, almost 100% of chances of inheriting huge money she if you go and read about her on wikipedia on google you will know she inherited this huge beauty empire of l'oreal this l'oreal is a household name in india as well she inherited all of this money despite her mother being totally against her lifestyle, totally disliking her daughter. Still, 
she fought a court case with a close confidant of her mother and won it and inherited all the money she herself is not that interested in business but she inherited the whole empire so this aspect of certain sun mass to the second house or any way making the connection with the second lord ensures that the person will inherit materialistic gain from the parents okay now venus jupiter mercury in angular houses venus and jupiter here okay mercury in cancer again and a dispositor of ascendant lord is also virgo ta saturn is in virgo in d1 and d9 so the ascendant lord is also virgo ta the personality is very you know impactful tenth lord mars is also aspecting the saturn and in turn this saturn is also aspecting the tenth lord second lord in kendra along with its dispositor venus again making it a good combination dispositor venus of 11th lord that is jupiter 11th lord is jupiter and its dispositor in d1 becomes venus is in singhasan amsa here in this varga venus happens to be in singhasan amsa which i told you already it is also in kerala in chodashwarga so this is very good for money jupiter it's again benefic it uh, showers all kind of prosperity onto the native if this is strong if jupiter is strong in a chart it may seem debilitated in the d1 not in this chart but i'm telling you otherwise but if you go in deeper and find out these layers and you see that it is strong in shard bal or it is strong in other vargas it ensures that it will give you good result all right just in the case of jupiter so being in these benefic amshas is good and it is more good in this case because it is also the second law now jupiter being second and 11th lord is conjunct is its dispositor again good second and 11th lord exalted in d9 jupiter is in cancer in d9 jupiter is in moon's navamsa and in d1 moon is aspected by the ascendant lord so that is also good the 10th lord is aspected by the ascendant lord and moon is also aspected by the ascendant lord which is good jupiter venus in angular houses this i told you already so these are some classical combinations which we see we have found in all the charts of the rich people of the world and they work very well so again see in dhirubhai ambani chart the ninth lord sun is in kerala amsha there are many other combinations also in this chart as well which you can see apply what i've told you and you will see that how many uh things are applicable in the dhirubhai ambani chart like dispositor of 11th lord is in benefic d60 in his chart let's check that dispositor of 11th lord in benefic d60 is in sitala mars venus is the 11th lord its dispositor is mars and it is in sitalamsa which is good right then 
this dispositor of ascendant lord strong and in Vaisheshi Kamsha also expected by benefit. Here, this planet becomes Jupiter. That's also this uh, combination is also applicable in Dhirubhai Ambani's chart. Right? So that's how. Now, when we check the dispositor of 10th lord in B7, this planet, either it is in Gudamsa or it is exalted. Then also, this becomes a good combination. Uh, here the 10th lord is Mercury. itself exalted in the D7, Mercury is. So that is again very good. Okay. So these are the combination. Now we should see that what are the concept of wealth in Indian purview. It is called that there are Asht Lakshmi, which a person need to have to call them prosperous. It includes child, health, peace, education. These all constitute the purview of Indian system of prosperity. When we check up to the Western system, what they think is riches is if they have ample amount of time, if they have ample amount of freedom, if they have time to pursue their hobby, if they can socialize well and also have good amount of money to enjoy all of it, then they call it a prosperous life. So we have to see what is the concept of prosperity. All right. So that is all which I want to discuss about wealth combinations. These combinations are pretty rare to find, but then also only 10 people all around, all around the world comes into the top 10 richest. Even top 100 richest will have these combinations. You can apply them in the chart. If you have any confusion, you can always ask me in the comment section. That is all. And my next video will be on Navamsha. Many people are confused how to check the Navamsha. I will give you a small video on that and that will surely help you out. So that is all from my side for today. Jai Shri Ram.